Good Thursday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather with Sim again. I hope you guys are all having a great day so far. And in today's weather forecast, we got a lot of things to talk about as we currently um, are having um, a tropical depression to still be watching for as um, we will likely see the strengthen to tropical storm Sarah during the next um, couple of hours so we will be going over what we can expect as she does develop plus we will also be going over what we can expect with the storm system as we head into next week which does look to bring that potential for some blizzard conditions, especially out there in the Great Lakes region, but will also bring that potential for high winds and um, cold air, especially farther down to the south. So we will be going over all that in today's um, forecast, so make sure to stay tuned till the end, um, as we will even have more to talk about, and we will also keep you guys updated with the latest. So don't forget to subscribe, like, and as well as leave any questions, comments, or concerns that you guys have down below you guys can leave anything down below as much as respectful and i will also get to those right after today's weather forecast but let's first go ahead and look at the overall tropics and as you guys can see we currently have a tropical depression we are currently watching as this is getting pretty close to impacting the yucatan peninsula in mexico so thankfully it's not tropical storm i'm um, sarah just yet but like i said this will be per pretty close to developing to tropical storms so that's why we are going to be watching it closely as we head in the later today which i think is about when it will develop but we'll just have to see what it does by the time we even head into tomorrow but as of right now though it's tropical depression 19 so obviously not too strong just yet but like i said we will continue to watch it very closely as you know it is getting ready to work its way towards um the yucatan peninsula also um honduras as well so you know those are going to be areas to continue to watch closely as you know we will you know even have that potential for you know maybe even a category one hurricane <laughs> But as of right now, though, we're mainly just expecting this to be a tropical storm by the time it does reach Honduras and as well as the Yucatan Peninsula. So nothing too crazy just yet, but once again, though, we will continue to watch it closely as it does get close to reaching those areas. And if we look at what models want to show for how strong it gets, some of them want to show close to Category 1, but I'm thinking more um, Tropical Storm, so I'm pretty much thinking right here is probably where it's going to be most likely, so this is probably about your average right here, so... You know, once again, nothing too crazy, but it, it will still be something to keep an eye on as it does get closer to the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. So we will continue to keep you guys updated with the latest, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And if we look at the total rainfall, guys, the total rainfall does look to be quite plentiful. We are talking the potential four up there towards 20 inches of rainfall across parts there of northern Honduras in Mexico. So, you know, even though the Yucatan Peninsula isn't going to be at risk for the heaviest rainfall, we will still likely see a lot of rainfall there, but it's especially, like I said, going to be across northern Honduras where we see that potential for up to 20 inches of rainfall. But once again, though, it's it's still kind of iffy on if this thing will get any stronger than what it is right now. Like I said, I'm thinking more like, you know, low to mid-tropical storm status. But if it does strengthen a little bit, we could definitely see a little bit more rainfall across these areas. But like I said, as of right now, I'm just thinking more, more tropical storm status as of right now. But like I said, we will keep you guys updated with the latest if this thing changes so once again make sure to subscribe if you haven't already let's now go ahead and look at what these models want to show about it and this this is just to give you an overview on what to expect and this model does show it a tropical depression before it reaches you know parts there of the yucatan peninsula like i said so once again nothing too crazy even as it gets up there towards florida it's pretty much gonna do this 
and it still shows it, you know, more of a tropical depression than really anything. So, you know, I probably wouldn't be as concerned about this, even though we really did think this could, we, this could have turned into a major hurricane, which, you know, we still can't rule out a category one hurricane, but as of right now, though, it probably isn't going to get that strong. So you guys in Florida, I would still want you guys to be prepared as flooding could still be a huge issue with this system. But it probably won't really be a huge um, risk for damaging winds, though. There probably won't be that, you know, huge of a risk for damaging winds, especially if the system continues out of tropical storm or tropical depression. But like I said, though, I'm pretty sure this is more than likely just going to continue as a tropical storm or tropical depression by the time it reaches this area, and maybe still a tropical depression by the time it reaches Florida. But like I said, nothing really too crazy as it will be reaching those cooler waters in the Gulf of Mexico. Mexico, and it will also be interacting with land more. Let's now go ahead and talk about a storm system that's going to be coming to the United States. Now, this is what we're more worried about compared to what we just talked about down there in um, the Caribbean, okay? So, as of right now, this storm is looking to really bring a lot of snow and rainfall to the Great Lakes region, all the way back down there towards the Ohio Valley as we head into November 20th, and this is still going to continue to bring that potential for widespread um, light to moderate snowfall across much of the Ohio Valley into the Great Lakes, um, Upper Midwest, and maybe even as far east as parts of New England. So this is going to be something to keep an eye on, and I know this probably doesn't show this, but we could maybe be seeing much higher amounts of snowfall, especially if we can like get these little small lake effect snow showers. I mean, some of these could go down there go down there i mean we could just see a lot of snow showers really develop off the great lakes region but that will only be if we can really get you know a storm like this ongoing so we will continue to watch it closely and you know even though you guys down here in the lower ohio valley don't don't really seem to get as much of the snowfall you guys will still likely get a lot so make sure to be aware about that if you do live in indiana illinois or ohio Let's now go ahead and look at what the storm system will do, and this is the latest from the Climate Prediction Center. And as you guys can see, the Climate Prediction Center is currently forecasting high winds for much of this region right here, as you guys can see, and so that is going to also bring that potential for maybe some blizzard conditions as the Climate Prediction Center is also very confident um, on heavy snowfall too as well as we do have a moderate risk for heavy snowfall around the Great Lakes. So we will need to watch that area very closely as we head into November 21st through November 22nd and that's going to be for the high winds area which is pretty much this big um, area that I just circled but for the heavy snow area across the the Great Lakes, we will be seeing that potential for heavy snowfall anywhere from the 11th, um, or not the 11th, but the 21st of, no of November, all the way to the 23rd of November. So once again, this is really going to be a pretty big um, storm to really keep an eye on, as it could even, um, as that low continues to spin, it could even bring a lot of cold air on down into these areas, which is one of the reasons why the Clamp Pritchens center also thinks there could be much below average temperatures down here in texas so like i said guys this you know really it really isn't really looking to be a great storm at all as i said we're really gonna see that potential for both high winds and heavy snowfall across much of the, um, you know, Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, Midwest, and even down there towards the Tennessee Valleys, but also, you know, that potential for even below average temperatures down there towards Texas into Arkansas, and I don't, and I know it doesn't show this, but that slight risk actually extends well back there towards North Carolina, so even though you may not be under the highest risk for below average temperatures, you guys in the south and southeast will still have that potential for below average temperatures and like i said that's going to be as we head from november 21st 
through November 22nd. And then after the storm systems roll on through, we may see another one develop. But as of right now, though, we're mainly just going to be focusing on that one as this one still does remain a little bit uncertain. So not really anything to really worry about just yet. But after the storm system, though, we will keep an eye on this one as this one may also strengthen and do some wild things too as well. But like I said, as of right now, though, not really looking too concerning as we are mainly going to be keeping an eye on, on the one we're keeping an eye on right now. Let's now go ahead and look at the temperatures now. And as you guys can see, on the 21st of November, when the storm system rolls on through, we will see, like I said, that low right here. And it's going to be bringing all of that cold air um, all the way down into the southeast. Look at that. We're talking much below average temperatures across this entire area right here, guys. This is pretty wild, guys. We would never see something like this happen, um, you know, in, in October, which which we haven't. This is a little bit more typical this time of year when we would, you know, usually see, you know, Arctic blasts. Because, you know, like I said, we, back in October, I don't know if you guys remember this, but we saw a huge surge of cold air, which we wouldn't usually see that just yet in October. But now that's November, this is a little bit more common now to see these huge areas from Canada, um, you know, surge on in with massive cold shots. So that is going to be something to keep an eye on as we head into November 21st. And that cold air is just going to continue to surge on down as we head into the 25th of November with potentially even a bigger one moving on through as we head into November 27th. So like I said, guys, this definitely, you know, is a pretty crazy storm just bringing continuous rounds of cold air air, bringing a lot of chances for snow and high winds, but also really bringing that potential for widespread below average temperatures across much of the eastern and central United States. So we will continue to watch this area really closely as like I said it really does look to bring you know that potential for you know some really um crazy weather but as of right now though you know this this arctic blast um that we're taking a look at right now still remains uncertain because we're looking all the way out to the very end of November but you know, I'm pretty sure we're a little bit more confident about having one as we head into November 21st, which, like I said, it's going to be this area right here to watch the closest as we head into November 21st, which is when we're going to see that potential for heavy snow and high winds across that area right there. Now, let's now go ahead and look at the total snowfall, and as you guys can see, we are expecting plentiful amounts of snowfall across much of the eastern United States, including the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, into the Mid-Atlantic region. Maybe some higher amounts as you get up there towards Wisconsin and Minnesota, as some isolated totals up to a foot cannot be rolled out, but I, I'm pretty sure most areas are probably only going to pick up around a half a foot at the most, so right, right around that six inch mark so that's probably going to be about your average right there right around six inches is probably going to be about your average for most of these areas but you know farther down to the south though we're really only talking like a dusting to maybe as much as three inches in some of these areas we're not really um you know super concerned about snowfall farther down to the south but if this does get a little bit worse we will let you guys know as we could maybe see a little bit of winter conditions across the central lower ohio valley and as well as into the midwest so like i said we will watch it closely but as of right now though not really looking as concerning far down to the south as it is concerning up here in the great lakes and then further your rainfall as you guys can see we are expecting a lot of rainfall across um, a lot there of the central and northern United States, but even over here towards parts there of the Ohio Valley, we will also see that potential for a lot of rainfall, even if we don't end up seeing snowfall. So we will keep an eye on it closely as we head into November 23rd, which I did forget to point out, by the way, but like I said, it is really going to be something to continue to keep an eye on as this is still looking to be a pretty big storm. And then let's finally go ahead and look at your December 
for outlook and this model has changed a little bit which is now showing above average precipitation across much of the Ohio Valley Midwest into New England and perhaps up there in the plains um so you know I'm pretty sure this is a little bit more accurate because you know it was showing below average precipitation for those areas in the Ohio Valley but it's finally starting to show more in the way of above average precipitation for those areas which like I said I'm pretty sure that would be a little bit more accurate due to what we're expecting as we head into the winter but with your temperatures though even though we will be seeing above average precipitation probably won't see as much in the way of below average temperatures but like I said we will see a lot of cold shots moving on down so we still will expect there to be below average temperatures at times just not you know as much um as you know what we would um, usually expect we would probably see a little bit in the way of a warmer than normal december but like i said there will still be times where we see those huge cold shots move on down into like the great lakes ohio valley and midwest so that will still be something to keep an eye on as we head into december but thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy today's weather forecast. If you guys are new here to the YouTube channel or if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to go down below and click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any weather updates on Weather with Sims as we will continue to keep you guys updated with the latest on the storm system as once again it really does look to bring that potential for high winds heavy snowfall and perhaps well below average temperatures so make sure to subscribe so that way we can keep you guys updated with the latest don't forget to leave a thumbs up too as well those help out more than you know and of course leave any questions comments or concerns that you guys have down below you guys can leave anything down below as long as it's respectful and i hope you guys all have a great rest of your day and we We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, everyone. Ooh.